Hello good people, I'm Dimitri and I love my MacBook Pro. I've had it for about two years. I love the form factor, the speakers, the screen is awesome and uh, the thinness and the weight is not an issue for me. But the performance has been suffering lately so let's investigate. So in the office, I use my PC to render videos and the MacBook is just being used as a little Netflix machine it, uh, you know, in my living room. But at CES, as I was starting to get back into editing with this machine, everyone's still sleeping. I'm rendering my first CES video on the throttle MacBook that has to be upside down for best airflow. So I think we're on to a good start. It felt really slow. It would throttle like crazy, even with the fans ramping up to 100%, so it was super loud. So I really wanted my gigahertz back because in the beginning, when I bought the MacBook, I was super happy with performance. But now, where did my gigahertz go? And in its current state, I would have to wait way too long for any 4K renders, which is why we had to revert to 1080p for our CES coverage. So I'm really sorry about that. So I have a little bit of thermal paste left. This is the Arctic Silver 5. It's a really nice thermal paste. I've been using this uh, particular tube for like a year and a half. I have no idea how there's still something in there left, but uh, we're gonna put the new thermal paste on and I've never actually opened the MacBook before, so I don't know what the procedure would be like, but uh, as long as we follow instructions and nothing breaks, we'll be fine. So let's begin right after this. Wondering how to fix a boring fan? Check out Halos RGB. They are super slim fan frames that light up your blades of any shade, come in 120 and 140 millimeter sizes to fit any fan and are controlled through your motherboard or your Fantex case. Available in beautiful aluminum or simple plastic, it's time to Halos your build. Outline what matters. Now before we begin, I want to say that, you know, watching a YouTube video on this thing would give me like 80 degrees Celsius and a really loud fan operation. I have no idea of why that's happening. And and while rendering videos, of course, it would just completely reach like 99 degrees Celsius at certain sections. It's just unacceptable performance. And I'm hoping that my application of new thermal paste and a little cleanup process will fix things. All I want is slightly better performance and reach Eber's level because he's using the Gigabyte notebook, which is super powerful and exporting times on that machine are just incredible. Like they almost match what I'm using on my desktop. And so I'm really hoping that with a little bit of extra performance, we can inch a bit closer to what Eber is experiencing on his Gigabyte. All right, so let's begin the teardown. Right, so everything went smoothly and man, you gotta appreciate that whole black PCB guts design. It's, you never see it until you open it, but you do appreciate once you do. And you definitely have to appreciate the cooler design. It's thinner than my watch band on my watch. That's just crazy. Uh, delivering so much performance in such a compact form factor, which is ironic because I'm having issues with performance. So let's see if that thermal paste reapplication did anything. And I'm happy to report that it did. Woo! Suck it, Eber, with your Gigabyte notebook the GTX 1080, whatever. Now, first I wanna point out something strange happening with Adobe Premiere when I'm exporting my 1080p timeline into either a 1080p output or a 4K output, thus upscaling your footage. So in the 1080p render, the CPU frequency drops to 1.9 gigahertz on average, while um, the GPU frequency is around 880 megahertz. While at 4K render, we are using about 2.3 gigahertz on the CPU and 1.1 gigahertz on the GPU. And it seems like it's down clocking when we are exporting into 1080p, both the GPU and the CPU, which I find strange because the temperatures uh, in that scenario are 85 degrees Celsius, which gives us plenty of headroom, like five degrees Celsius until we hit that 90 degree uh, sort of ceiling for Premiere or for the MacBook in general. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening. And if you do, let's have a conversation 
conversation below. And after the thermal paste swap, we're actually seeing 150 megahertz bump in the CPU frequency and about 100 megahertz on the GPU with slightly increased temperatures. But that's fine because as long as the machine can do the cooling itself, uh, it can boost to its maximum frequency and gain extra power and thus reduce our render times. So that's 8% reduction in 1080p renders. So, uh huh. And then for you. So, what does that mean for my render types? I still plan to use this machine for shows. Actually, I might steal Eber's Gigabyte. And so for 1080p, we're seeing 8% faster render times after the swap, and in 4K, a 7% faster render times, which is fantastic for this quick little, little fixer-upper. Yeah. And in simple minutes, instead of waiting 40 minutes for a 4K export, I now get to wait only 37. Also, during YouTube playback, I'm no longer hovering around 80 degrees Celsius. We dropped to about 76, so that's great. And I'm thinking, I don't know what's happening there, but at load, the fan speed may seem to have dropped slightly because I'm also seeing about a 0.5 decibel uh, reading lower uh, after the swap at load while it's exporting. All right, so I don't know what else to say, but it works. Swapping your thermal paste on the MacBook it's fairly straightforward as long as you follow instructions and you have the correct tools and uh, really good thermal paste too. And just seeing what I was able to achieve in this, uh, you know, performance wise, pretty happy that it all turned out well. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and check out that Gigabyte notebook that I've been talking about because man, Eber sure sells it well. It seems like a fantastic little performer. I'll try to leave it right over there. I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.